Hey everyone, welcome back to Inside the Cage, where we bring you the latest and exciting updates of UFC. First, hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. UFC 291, rematch, Poirier vs. Gethya 2. Key stats. Let's break down the key stats of the showdown between Poirier and Gethya, and guess what they mean for the fighters in the upcoming match. First up, we've got Dustin Poirier, and you know he is an ultimate force to be reckoned with. Here, he's got some impressive stats, like 14 finishes, tied 5th all-time, 10 KOTKO wins, tied 6th all-time, and landing 6.18 strikes per minute. Without any doubt, this guy is powerful at 155 pounds. His boxing skills are top-notch, with an accurate power left hand. When he gets in close, watch out for those thudding hooks to the head and body. And the best part? He keeps his cool in a firefight, choosing just the right moments to unleash those power shots on his fading opponents. Simply impressive. Next, we've got Justin Gaethje. And let me tell you, he's an action-packed fighter through and through. Check out these stats. 7.38 strikes landed per minute, eighth all-time. 60.2% significant strike accuracy, first all-time among LW, and 11 total fight night bonuses, tied fifth all-time among LW. I know, Gaethje is your favorite fighter because he never backs down, whereas it's all his action of all the time. His leg kicks are deadly, and he loves working his way up to his opponent's head. You'll see him throw powerful but simple strikes like the check hook and rear uppercut, while his pace never slows down during a fight. Undeniably, he's like a tornado in that octagon. So yeah, keep an eye on Pereira's footwork and Gethia's skills. It might be the key to this showdown. Paulo Costa fires back at Kamza Chimaya for UFC 294. Here again, there are rumors about Paulo Costa's upcoming fight against Kamza Chimaev. And you know what? It's all ready to be one of the most expected non-title bouts on the UFC's calendar. Whoa! The main point, this grudge match is scheduled in Abu Dhabi's Etihad Arena at UFC 294. So the fight's got everyone excited, and for a good reason. It's like the stars aligned for this epic showdown. But wait, there's more. It seems like there's a bit of drama behind the scenes, too. Costa claims that Kimaev tried everything in his power to avoid this fight. I guarantee you, it is some pre-fight tension. You know what's interesting because I want that fight so bad. A lot. I want a lot that fight. Dana White wants a lot in that fight. The audience wants that fight, but not Kimaev, Costa said on the MMA Hour. Kimaev doesn't want that fight, so he tried hard to get another guy to fight. Leon Edwards, Bilal Muhammad, Kamaru Usman, he called all these guys, this is crazy, to fight him, and only the guys in the lower weight division. But he's kind of nuts because he was not fighting at 170. He's going to fight at 185, so he was trying to pull up some lighter guys to 185, you understand? And not fight a genuine 185 ER. Next, let me fill you in on how this beef all started. According to Costa, it goes back to 2022 when Chimaev was about to fight Nate Diaz at UFC 279. And guess what? Chimaev was waiting nearby, keeping an eye on Costa. Naturally, Costa couldn't help but wonder why Chimaev was giving him the evil eye. So Costa didn't back down and straight up told Chimaev that he wanted to fight him. And from there, things took a turn for the intense. The two got into a heated exchange, and it almost escalated into an all-out brawl right then and there. Since then, it's a verbal fighting match between the two, and the insults have been flying like crazy. He's nuts! He's crazy! He says nothing relevant! Nothing that makes sense! He's crazy, Costa said. Paulo Costa is definitely in for a challenge at UFC 294. Kamzat Chimaev has been nothing short of dominant since he entered the UFC in July 2020. I think this fight will be crazy and it's going to end in the first round, Costa said. Knock out. I will not try to submit him. I'm a black belt, but I will not try to submit him. I don't think he's going to try to submit me as well. So explosive of a guy, so full of energy. I prefer knockout. Now here's where it gets interesting. The middleweight division is a bit up in the air right now, with Drikas Duplessis and Sean Strickland both competing for a shot at Israel Adesanya's title. But guess what? Costa's got the right plan. Dude, he is all confident that if he can spectacularly defeat Kimaev, he'll cut the line and make his way to that title shot. Certainly, it's like a high-stakes game of chess in the UFC's middleweight division, and Costa is ready to make his move. He's got his eyes on the prize, and he's not holding back. 
If he can impressively take down Kimaev, he believes he'll be the next one in line for that coveted title shot against Adesanya. I think due to all this situation in the middleweight division and due to all this hype about this fight against me, against Kimaev, the next in line is going to be the winner, he said. Damn, this is what makes MMA so exciting. The competition, the rivalries, and the chance for athletes to prove themselves on the biggest stage. So get ready for UFC 294, because this clash is going to be one for the history books. Conor McGregor's tribute to Sinead O'Connor. Recently, a piece of very sad news reached Conor McGregor, a brief statement from her family. It is with great sadness that we announce the passing of our beloved Sinead. Her family and friends are devastated and have requested privacy at this very difficult time. At this very sad moment, he paid a touching tribute to his dear friend Sinead O'Connor, and all his fans feel the pain in it. Moreover, he took to Twitter with a heavy heart after hearing the sad news of Sinead's passing at the age of 56. It's like a beautiful bond that went beyond the octagon. It seems they had a very special connection. Do you remember when Sinead sang Connor to the octagon during UFC 189 back in 2015? Man, it was one of those unforgettable moments in sports history. Her rousing rendition of The Foggy Dew echoed through the showground, setting the stage for Connor's epic fight. But Sinead was more than just a singing sensation. She was a pioneer who fearlessly broke down barriers on important issues of society. And in Connor's tribute, he truly captured the essence of his friend. He referred to her as the voice of an angel, and you can tell that she meant the world to him. It's proof of the deep connection they shared, right? He said, So let's take a moment to remember the powerful legacy she leaves behind. Surely her impact on this world will never be forgotten. Guys, if you're enjoying the video, we'd love your support. Just hit that subscribe button to motivate us to bring you more exciting content. TikToker Keith Lee confronts Sean Strickland on racism claims. Last but not least, the drama is going on between TikToker Keith Lee and UFC fighter Sean Strickland. So let me catch you up on the juicy details. Back in the day, Keith Lee was a fighter, but now he is known as a TikToker. Meanwhile, his TikTok account blew up after he decided to work on his speaking skills during the 2020 pandemic. Here, things take a U-turn when UFC fighter Sean Strickland accused Keith Lee of being racist. Yep, you heard that right. After that, a clash of two worlds started, social media and UFC, and it's got everyone talking. People are taking sides, and the tension is just intense. Nah, fuck that. I don't like white people. Now Lee is clapping back in a new TikTok addressing the claim Strickland made, stating, Yes, me and Sean had a conversation. No, this conversation didn't go anything how he depicted it. Furthermore, Keith Lee clarified that he joined a conversation where the topic was already about race. Initially, the discussion was intelligent and productive. Later on, things escalated when Strickland said, Yo, Lee, I'm not racist. I fuck more black women than you have, bro. How am I racist? In return, Lee said, He then spun my words into saying what he said I said. And he goes, Nah, f that. I don't like white people. Never at one point did I say I don't like anybody. I simply disagreed with what he said, and instead of fighting ignorance with ignorance, I said, No, I'm happily married with children, and I'm very proud of the family that God has allowed me to build. Strickland tweeted about Lee's response, stating, So yeah, one thing's for sure, such statements are making headlines everywhere. And we are here to keep a close eye on how this story develops. All right, guys, that's all for today. Don't forget to like and subscribe to our channel. See you at the next one. Until then, goodbye.